how did I get here? It'll be a quick flashback in which, yeah, Izuku started uh, for the first time ever mouthing off to Bakugo, talking shit for once. Not only calling him a bad friend, that he would possibly be a even worse hero. Bakugo's pride is wounded. So his only real uh, choice in the matter is to beat the ever-loving shit out of Izuku. Luckily for Izuku, there is no quirk usage outside of oh, cool. heroes and whatnot. Bongo is very hesitant to really use his quirk against him. So what Izuku does is run for the hills while they're still in public. Running his way to the old uh, warehouse in which no one ever dared just even consider going into. They've actually been close to this place before as kids. One thing is they've always been too scared to go in there. Bago especially. And them thinking that Izuku is you know coward and whatnot. He wouldn't expect him to do it, regardless. So, they spend the rest of that time pretty much looking for him while Izuku hides. But, in the midst of this, he does uncover something. One of the floorboards is... loose. He opens it just to see the way, is there a basement down here? And being all confused yet intrigued, his curiosity gets the best of him. This blue tinted glow just beckons him towards it. In which, you can imagine, there is a massive skull just looking right at him. He's a good being how this is, and you know, a normal human reaction, he freaks out. But he's instantly calmer as he starts to slowly inch towards it. His hand outreached. Then the blue tint turns green as it disappears and Izuku gets dizzy. He starts to stumble. And the last thing he sees is a bunch of glowing green eyes with green flames to accompany them. And with that, he is passed out. When he wakes up. Yeah, he's still in that basement. The only thing is, the skull's gone. The green tint, well, the blue tint that beckoned him to begin with is gone. So, yeah. He sees on his phone, like, whoa, it's later than I anticipated. As he leaves. Inko is worried sick about him, as hell, who wouldn't? Which parent or guardian wouldn't be worried if their kid is late coming home from school? So, this does have easy to say, what happened down there? Of course, he has no real time to think about it, because he is contemplating the God knows how bad ass whooping he's going to get as soon as he goes into his classroom. Why? Because he remembers why he was there to begin with. To hide from Bungo and his cronies. And though, yes, the teacher is a teacher who's supposed to protect the kids, we have seen enough in kind of that he is zero fucks when it comes to how Bakugo treats Izuku. He, like the students, talk down to him, don't think much of him, because he's quirkless. So he is dreading going to school, even to the fact that he asks Ingo, please, I beg you, don't let me, don't, don't make me go to school. Say, please, I, we, I can get homeschooled, I'll get a job, I can do this, I can do that. Tell them I'm sick, tell them I have the plague, just 
Say, um, my quirk will wake, waken or something. But I can't. Why? Because it, you had to go to school. That's, you have to get an education or else you might not be able to attend UA. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. So, Izuku begrudgingly, reluctantly, or however fancy way you want to say it, he does end up going to school. Other students are looking at him because they know what he did. I mean, he's all around the school, so everyone wants to get ready for, to see this ass whooping. As, yeah, Izuku is nervous. As soon as the door opens, as soon as he goes through that classroom door, he sees the chairs, the desks, they're moved to the side. Even the teacher's desk is slightly moved just so it's not in the way. As Zuku's looking around, seeing all his classmates just snickering, laughing, pretty much placing bets. Izuku is shitting himself. So yeah, sadly. Then he notices some explosions in the back of the class. Bago, he's not smiling at all. He's pissed. Which slowly turns into an evil grin. Like, you know what's gonna happen, don't you? Uh, <laughs> Look. Let's just get this over with, shall we? Let's see what we just done. The sooner we can get back to our normal school lives. Me being the pride of the school, and you being a disappointment. <sighs> it's tell like that that really stills in my mind that you can be a hero, Kachan. I see you need your balls busted, don't you? You mouth off to me like you know me. I do know you. That's why you should really listen to what I have to say. I hope you're ready to die, Deku. And yes, Izuku is shocked at the speed of Rossi of his of Bakugo's attacks, in which he does dodge at least two of them until he gets bitch slapped over and over and over again. Teachers, students, hell, students who aren't even part of that class as well as teachers all came in just to watch this. Some of them even started to start flashing their phones, recording this poor boy's onslaught of... As then Izuku... He has bruises, he has burned, scorched marks. Hell, even his eyebrows are singed. Bago! After this, I. <laughs> we'll see if you start mouthing off to me again. As this is one of Bago's biggest explosions he can do without alerting, you know. The authorities. As he throws this explosion, he's like, he's blocking. As it connects. Well, the thing is, once Bob go, this explosion subsides, the dust clears, everyone is shocked. Because now, there's a skull. Right there. Shielding Izuku. It took all of Bargo's explosions and ate that. 
everyone was like, wait, wait, wait a minute. I thought he was quirkless. All this time, we were told, he told us. No way. He's literally opening his eyes just to see this thing. He gets flashbacks to this place. He's like, it's you. As then the skull turns around to look at Izuku and starts rubbing up against his face. Happy. L1 is shot that it's like, wait, he has a quirk? And then they notice Izuku's eyes are glowing the same green as this skull. And it's a fire re essence that just pours from Izuku's eyes. And they're wondering what the hell is going on. Bakugo is pretty much. I thought you were quirkless. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> so are you kidding me? You, this, it doesn't matter, it's still nothing compared to mine. As the fight continues, this time, Izuku isn't getting blasted. What's happening is, this the skull is actually protecting him, shielding him from Bakugo's explosions. Everyone who thought this was going to be a complete wash, that like, Izuku's just going to get his ass whooped and be, they can go home with their normal quirk filled lives. <laughs> they are shocked at this. Because not only is this thing strong enough to withstand all those explosions, it can keep, you can take one and keep going like nobody's business. But just then, Bogo, he does something unexpected. He switches up his attack patterns to a point where, yeah, the school got used to them, which made it even more easy to protect Kizuku, but it's, as soon as Bogo switches up, this is when the explosion is very powerful and is about to hit Izuku. The skull can't make it in time. And everyone's like, okay, this is probably bad. Because you can tell, Bakugo's been sweating a lot. And he is angry. So as far as holding back, he's doing that less and less now. And if that hits Izuku, it's gonna hurt a lot. But before it makes contact with him, there is a beam of light, green energy, that shoots Bogo's hand and sends him flying. Is it, uh, 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 what? Everyone's looking as, yeah. The skull shot a laser beam. It couldn't protect Izuku any other way, so it said, let's do this. Everyone, especially Izuku, is shocked at this. It's like, that's impossible. How are you doing this? And then they notice Izuku, he's breathing all heavy. He's exhausted. Wait, so, wait, so that's what. <laughs> okay, fine. I'm going to play nice. Izuku, exhausted as all hell. He has no idea what he just did, but all things considered, just, Let's see if I can do it again. This time he calls back the skull. And then summons another one. Everyone's like, wait, wait, why does he have two of them? As Bongo is pretty much, as you can imagine, pissed as all hell. But Izuku still not knowing much about these things. One thing was her, 
Keeping him close would probably be his best bet. So he sticks his hand through them. One for each fucking hand. As Bago is like, what are you doing? Izuku is using them as bracers. I have no idea if this is going to work, but it's worth a shot. As he makes a defensive stance, getting ready to at least stand better chance against Bakugo, who is still getting very much upset. So, this is pretty much a whole, let's see what this new power of mine can do for Izuku. Well, Bakugo is like, I am not going to be bested by someone so much weaker than me. One thing is, when it comes to the beams, as well as yeah, explosions, Izuku is matching Bago's explosions. But the only reason why he hasn't collapsed through pure exhaustion over using him so long is because he is that determined to continue the fight until at least one of them can't fight anymore. Let's see whose determination outlasts whose. In which Izuku is the victor. But not before Bakugo unleashes his strongest explosion yet. He burst past Izuku's arms through his defenses and goes straight for the face. He doesn't even care right now. But before it makes contact, Izuku summons a third skull right in the middle of the attack and it blocks him. Izuku's mouth opens and he blasts e poor poor Katsuki Bakugo through the damn door. Everyone is shocked at this seeing that what the hell did we just watch? As you can imagine Izuku is finally able to rest. The skulls disappear, and he is now unconscious along with Bakugo. When he wakes up, he's in a hospital bed. But the thing is, he's handcuffed. He's wondering, wait, wait, what's going on? Is this is when Aizawa's? Well, looks like you had a quite. A quirk awakening kid. What? Wait, then why am I? Because we don't know how dangerous your quirk is. As then he turns his head and sees Bakugo wrapped up in a scarf. What happened? He tried to attack you while you were sleeping. What? Yeah, so don't worry. Uh, am I in trouble? Mm, no, not really. The thing is, this quirk of yours, from what I gather, it is pretty versatile. Strong, yes. But it also has potential to be very dangerous. So we would like to keep an eye on you. At least for the time being. Make sure you're not a danger to yourself or others. What? So I am in trouble? No, no, you're not. Your quirk it really needs to be. Mm, needs to be honed, at least. Huh. But what about. Uh, cock? Katsuki. As we have Bakugo heard Izuku stop himself from saying Kachan. As yeah, he's like, did he really just call me by my first name? Yeah. And you can imagine Izuku himself was shocked that he actually didn't call him by his name. At least, nickname. 
<sighs> well, since he, by all accounts, started this fight, in fact, we're going to have the whole school investigated for allowing this to transpire, especially them having prior knowledge that you were quirkless and allowing you to go up against someone with such a destructive quirk. If anything, your quirk awakening couldn't have happened at a better time or else you end up a lot much more damaged or worse, dead. Uh, so what you, what's going to happen to catch on? If anything, we're going to do a more thorough investigation on him to make sure that it Possessions don't really count as attempted murder or manslaughter. Assault, definitely. He definitely did enough of that, but... Oh no, can he still be a hero? What? I mean, we wanted to go to UA. You think he's fit for UA High? He seems like one of the last people we would ever even think about allowing to attend. Though Quirk is powerful, it takes more than that to be a hero. <clears throat> what? Mr. Bakugo. You can't expect me to sugarcoat it now, can you? Your actions prove that you may not be worthy of being a hero. As for you, yes, your quirk is also dangerous. Indeed, your quirk just awakened in which you will need time to fully utilize and hone your new abilities. Though, yes, you are part of that fight as well and you did Super amount of damage to Mr. Bakugo, it is seen as self defense. So, there will be no real charges placed upon you. Except for destruction of no property. Oh. Uh oh, okay, so. Does that mean. Yes. You can still attend UA. But you're still going to have to go through the same process as our other applicants. Oh, uh, okay. So, what now? I mean, well, your mom would like to talk with you for a little bit, so I will leave you to it. Wait, my mom? Eagle bursting down the hospital door, running to Izuku, tackling him, reached dogpiling on his stomach, crying. Why, why did you tell you the wicked your quirk? I thought you were just being dramatic. I didn't know you were going to have to fight Katsuki. I, I, why did you tell me you were being bullied? Why'd you tell me you were having trouble at school? The people bullying you. You we we could have I I could have taken you to a different school. Someone somewhere where there are e quirks, or at least no discrimination against the quirkless. We could have I could have uh, I Oh man, I'm so sorry. Huh? It's uh, not your fault. It's it's mine. What? Of course it's my fault. So, so I I have some blame to be. A, I I had to be accountable for something. Mom, it's not your fault. I decided to continue attending that school despite the treatment I was receiving. So. At the end of the day, this was inevitable. 
I just got sick of all Caught John's. I'm sorry. Kotsky's behavior. Wait, why did you do that? What do you mean? Why did you just go from calling him Kotsky on the Kotsky? Is this really mean? Yes. He's not my friend anymore. Oh. Huh. Well. Okay. Is he? You know. Well, we do have to have him serve some type of time for at least the property damage he's caused. What property damage? He, uh, he shot Mr. Bakugo through a door, and at least one wall, cracked the other one. He's gonna have to pay some sort of, uh, you know, recompense. Oh. Uh, how much is that? Oh no, there is no need. If anything, I say community service will suffice. Really? Of course. I mean, there are quark awakenings happening God knows how much it will in the world. We can't treat you like a criminal per se, especially since it was such a sudden so at the very least, with this community service, it should be able to help you, you know, get more attuned to your newfound abilities. In which, yes, you could see it as training. Oh, okay. I, I, um, thank you. No problem. Now, for our next order of business. Here. What's this? This is where your Obiga serving your community service. Dagaba Beach? Well, it used to be a beach, but after so long, it's become more of a landfill. What? what? Yeah. At the very least, this could prove a ideal place for you now to serve your your dues to society, but also to I don't know work on your quirk. Don't you think? Really? Hmm. Yeah. I know you didn't hear it from me, but yes, you could use this opportunity to get better at using your quirk. At the very least, a little bit better. Thank you. Don't thank me. Thank him. Him? As then All Might walks through the door with that beautiful smile of his. Uh, I, uh, I, 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 are you alright? <coughs> Mr. All Might? Uh, Mr. Uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, All Might, he's. A real big fan of yours. Ah, yes, that, that that would make sense. Hmm. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, young Midoriya. <sighs> At the very least, hmm, I will be the one supervising your community service at Dagobah Beach. Along with Mr. Aizawa here.
What? Yes. I mean, at the very least. Just in case this quirk of yours does seem to be unstable, or you do require some assistance in controlling it, me and Mr. Aizawa here will be instrumental to make sure no one gets hurt and no more property damage ensues. <laughs> So, I'm technically going to be trained by Eraserhead and All Might? Hmm. I guess you could see it as that way, yes. <laughs> this is the greatest thing ever! I can't believe it, I'm going to be trained by the number one hero. And, less than known, but still very great. Underground here. This is amazing. And then he remembers, like, wait. Uh, actually, before we do this, I have to go somewhere. Mm. Alright. Alone? Hmm. Really? You have to go alone? Yes. Hmm. All right. Fine. Well, but by tomorrow morning, we expect you at a day by beach. Uh, yes, sir. Good. As yes, this is pretty much how that whole scene ends. Is <laughs> Zuko pretty much getting what he? <laughs> Never thought it was possible. Because here, he didn't meet All Might before. He didn't get a type of villain. He doesn't know about All Might's secret. He doesn't know about One for All at all. So, even before he got uh, the Gasser Blasters, he still uh, had some semblance of hope of becoming a hero. His bright bug goes. And the uh, whole soon body is interference. <sighs> okay, let's see if I can, can get some more information out on this. Because he's back in the basement. He's looking for anything even remotely connected to the skulls he used. Still nothing. Except for a uh, note. I've chosen you to bear one of my greatest weapons, the Gaster Blaster. Use it however you see fit, and whether you want to be a hero or a villain, one who inspires hope or fear, the choice is yours. May the gods have mercy on you as you shall guard space time as 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 what? Hmm. As then he gets another note. But the only thing is, it's written very confusingly to the point he doesn't know what it's saying. Until he's like, wait. Is this? Huh. I think I've heard this before. It's called uh, Wingdings or whatever it's called. This might take a minute for me to actually translate. Him using his phone to get a cipher so we can actually learn what else this whoever he is is trying to say. As it is pretty much a rundown of the Gaster Blasters. They're used for defense, offense, transportation, 
And there's a little hint on other abilities he may acquire throughout his usage of them. But one thing's for certain, he is warned not to overdo it. Because that is... Uh, you don't want to be unconscious if you're still required to fight. And given the fact that he is very knowledgeable as a child and him still wanting to learn more about quirks, whether this isn't a quirk, and this was pretty much bestowed upon him by accident due to him wanting to actually hide from his bullies, Izuku is, like a better word, very intrigued, to say the least. At least when it comes to what else he can really do with these things. Because right now, the only thing he's done was use them as armor, or at least projectile weapons. When he summons one, then he realized, oh wait, here's another little thing. Oh yeah, these things are also somewhat sentient. Which does explain why the first one he summoned actually snuggled up against his face, happy to be used. But it's also begs the question, wait, so these things have a mind of their own? Huh. But one of the best things Izuku figured out besides the practical uses is how to strengthen them. He pretty much has to keep them as active as possible. Not really having them shoot energy beams, but mainly just having them around. Thinking of them as an extension of his own being. Izuku being the type of guy who is very nice and caring. <sighs> he sees these things not as really tools or hell, not even pets, more like an extinction extension of himself. So, next morning, he does the run of Jacob Beach. Seeing the mountain of trash and garbage, he's early shocked. When all my eyes all show up, he's pretty much. Huh, you're really here. Of course. Of course. I said that would be so. Released. Let us get your training going, shall we? But one thing's certain, your quirk, I would actually love to see it in action besides the videos. What? I would actually like to spar with you to see how strong these, what do you call them? These skulls are yours, what do you call them? Does you can remember the names of the Gaster Blaster? Hmm. Interesting. What made you come up with that name? Uh. It just, um, felt right. Hmm. Very well. So, these gaster blasters are yours. What else can you do? From what I see, the a bit some kind of energy as well as being very sturdy to take all those explosions. Would you like to try them against one of my punches? What? But, as yeah, the gas of last year is just like, yes, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. <laughs> you guys are serious? You, you want to get punched by All Might? Mm-hmm. Just nodding their skulls. Wait, you're talking to them? Y yeah. Wait, are these 
sentient? Are they uh, technically alive? I like getting a better look at them. Uh, yeah. Impressive. Very well. <clears throat> so these things are. Hmm. They have their will of their own. That is quite amazing. I saw that you were able to summon three of these gaster blasters. Is that your limit? Uh, actually, I'm not sure. Hmm. Very well. Okay, what about size alteration? You had two of them and one on each arm, and they worked as bracers. But then you summoned another one as a helmet. Yeah. So, how big can they become? I'm not sure. Uh, let's just get this whole training community service thing over with before you cause the kid to be more self conscious about this new power he unlocked. What are you talking about? I'm just asking him questions about a quirk he's never used before. Uh, right. I, I'm very sorry. That was very inconsiderate of me. Of course you wouldn't know the full capabilities of your quirk. I mean, you just realized you had one, so I apologize. As for 10 months, yes, Izuku is cleaning out Deku of each. Mainly using the Gaster Blasters not only for dodging practice, target practice, also defensive capabilities. In which, let's say, at the beginning, they can only withstand 1% of Walmart's power before they start to show anywhere or tear, you know, damage. But at the end, they're at least able to withstand 5%. When it comes to all my getting hit with a Esther Blaster's beam, yeah, first, yeah, there's. It's pretty much like. Eh, kind of like a fly. But at the end of the day, he can at least be uh, subdued by them. And he's like, knowing that, wait, yeah, this. They don't know that this is in a quirk, so I should be very cautious when I use this against someone when, you know, Mr. Aizawa was around. Because if these guys don't go away when he looks at me with that quirk of his, chances are he's going to get suspicious to what is really going on. Okay, I don't even know what's really going on. So yes, he's a goo, of course, keeping this a secret. All Might, as well as Aizawa, uh, training him. He's gotten a lot more confident in himself. He's starting to get more lean. He's built up some muscle, as well as being able to literally ride on top of a gas blaster. Like a surfboard. One time, as training, he decided, like, okay, let's see if I can use one as a bed. Which he slept soundly that day. One thing he actually really was interested about was how he utilized them during his first fight while using them. Gasher Blaster gauntlets, or bracers, and a helmet. Even though, yes, he used them not only as armor, he was still able to use the beams. Though they were channeled from them to him, so he could actually use the abilities himself. 
So, one thing he's actually was interested in trying was actually creating a well-known move called the Kamehameha Wave. He was able to be around Master Roshi's level of, let's say, mass when it comes to it. One thing is, his stamina was never really the best, so he really had to train when it comes to utilizing them. One thing he did also notice is that wearing them as armor actually kind of boosted his physical stats. If anything, yes, he though he still got tired around the same a little bit more since, yeah, he's still using them as armor. He is a bit stronger. At least one or two percent of one for all. Canon Izuku's one for all. As you can imagine, All Might? Aizawa, they're impressed at this. Like, this kid learns very quickly for someone who just recently awakened a quirk. Izuku. He has a lot of ideas when it comes to what else could this thing actually do. What are the other capabilities? As he does have an idea. Though he isn't that good at making them move on their own. Making it so they are summoned. Regardless if he wants them to be or not, can make them very good, like a bad word, security guards or bodyguards, whenever he's not paying attention. Kind of like gargoyles protecting the castle and its inhabitants. So, he's a group. Was see to do, but test out something in which he falls asleep trying to keep the Kessel Blasters active while he is. Luckily, since they are sentient, they don't really need his orders as much. Besides, watch over his body and protect it. He wanted to learn if he could do this because. Hey, if there's a villain attack, he can just send as many gas blasters as he's able to not only attack villains, but protect civilians and other heroes, watching their backs, making sure that they're getting the proper help. Hell, even using the beams as a type of flare, just in case. As, yeah, all my... Yeah, so they are hella impressed at Izuku's versatility. I mean, at first, they don't look like much besides just a point and shoot type deal when it comes to the Gastro Blasters, but at the end of the day, he's proven that, yeah, there's more to these things that meets the eye. They have a lot more utility than what you expect flying sentient skulls that shoot laser beams. Hell, even I'm a All Might and Azawa train with Izuku when it comes to dodging these things. Which, since Izuku does have them on a low beam setting, or at least not nearly as much power as they're capable of utilizing, yeah, you can see it's pretty good training when it comes to dodging. The more advanced and better they get, the more Izuku has each skull start to shake it up a little bit. Be more erratic, be less predictable. But by this time, Izuku can summon at least eight. Eight gas blasters that can each work individually of Izuku's orders. 
You can still give them orders, each of them, but still, they can function independently of him. They don't need him to be constantly dishing out orders. One time, one time, though, he would start fighting with each other, which Izuku does have to discipline them. But then Izuku has an idea. From watching all my videos to so, so much, he's always wanted to fly and soar through clouds like All Might. So he actually has a gaster blaster strapped to his back and tries to use it as a jetpack. The only thing is, it is not easy to control at all. I mean, it's a, it's a constant beam that's just shooting out energy, causing him to be able to fly, yes, but also it's a straight line. So he ends up using gaster blasters as boots, in which he's hovering or he's floating. I uh, might. I guess, like, wow, you. Are you sure you haven't trained with this court before? You're just like, thank you, Gaster, for your detailed instructions. Because during this time, whenever he's not training, when he's ever not home or school, he has been doing uh, quite a bit of reconnaissance. Try and learn more about the Gaster Blasters as well as possibly Gaster himself. Because though, yes, he pretty much gave him the rundown, his basic rundown of the Gaster Blasters, Izuku is very curious to what Gaster possibly could have meant when he said other possible abilities. I mean,. What well, other abilities could he possibly obtain? He doesn't know until he either unlocks them or finds out through Gaster's notes. In which he does find something very interesting. A research facility. And what's that research? Why? Gas... Strip blasters. He wonders, so wait, these things are more than just. Hmm. Okay. Alright, okay. Interesting. I really do wonder what these things could possibly be capable of, but this is very. Eye opening. As he goes through more notes, he's like, okay, so I can use this formula to make a gaster blusher that it can do this, it can do that. Hmm. What else would they be able to do? I mean, using them as armor, that must have been part of the research already, so. Hmm. Oh, so size alteration wasn't a base thing. It's something you, that they had to learn? Wait, they can learn? Oh, it would make sense if they are sentient, but honestly, they can learn. I never thought of that. As now, it is time for the oh man, the entrance exam. Izuku not being completely worried about training was able to study, which he does good in the theoretical exam. When it comes to the practical portion of it, he is nervous. But more along the lines of okay, I kind of want to test out my theories, but it might be better just to play it safe for right now. As he does beat Oraka, the only thing is he doesn't need her to save him from falling. He does see Bakugo, but Bakugo 
really doesn't want to be bothered with Izuku <laughs> right now. He's still hella salty about not only losing to Deku, but he also almost had his application to UA denied. So yeah, he's he's definitely not wanting to talk to Deku right now. As far as the hmm, practical Izuku, you can imagine he armors up. Everyone's like, "Wait, he's using support gear." He's like, nope, this is my quirk. As he flies off, everyone's like, "Wait a minute, how is that?" Does he have an armor quirk or something? Because that looks like bones. He's you... skulls or something. The problem is like, you better hurry up before he starts getting points as they see Zuku is constantly bombarding zero pointers before they even start to appear. One pointers, two pointers, three pointers. And uh, like I said, zero pointers. They're all getting destroyed by Izuku. This is a Nezu kinda went overboard with thanks to All Might and Aizawa's critique of the boy. Very interested to see what he, this kid is capable of. <laughs> Which does scare them. But they do also have faith in the training that they have administered. It's when this the biggest zero pointer after pretty much all the points have been collected everyone's kind of salty at Izuku for stealing a majority of the points when it comes to the zero pointer yeah they're more focused on the running as you does hear a scream and he's more like you guys are such cowards running away from Someone who needs your help. As Izuku, he decides to summon a giant gaster blaster. And on one quick beam, he destroys this giant behemoth of a zero pointer from crushing this poor girl. Him allowing her to ride on his gaster. Ride on the gaster blaster. Oh Christ. She is very grateful before they can actually get their name to so exchange info of any kind. Izuku is called to the office. What well, he does mean is it was like, okay. So, these gastro blessings are yours. Yeah. They're not a quirk, are they? <coughs> what? <laughs> what? Uh, Mr. Nezu, what, what could you possibly be talking about? Oh, don't play dumb with me. I'm the one who really assigned All Might and Aizawa to watch you. Because, though late bloomers are a thing, but quirks like yours. Hmm. Something doesn't seem right. It seems kind of somewhat underworldly. 